Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital, and I'm here today to talk about reverb once again. In my last video, I talked about the stock reverb from Bitwig and how you should use it primarily with other effects in its effects bends to get the best results. But in this video, I want to talk about some alternatives to the reverb, the, the stock reverb in Bitwig that are actually part of Bitwig that you don't have to spend anything extra for. And there are six other algorithms. And in many cases, these algorithms will be your best choice for reverb, even probably better than a few other commercial things. Well, in my humble opinion, these are grid effects presets that I created for Bitwig. And in this video, I'm going to go through what they are, how to access them and what to, you know, how to use the different settings on them. So if that is interesting to you, please stay tuned. We're going to get into this. Okay, so here we are in Bitwig and we're in the browser. So to get to these FX grid presets, what we wanna do is go to the presets tab and then go into um, the audio effects, space, time, and color package. If you don't have this package, by the way, it's probably because you haven't downloaded all of the packages that come with Bitwig. Um, and so, yeah, go ahead and do that. It's worth it. I think there's some really great things going on in the uh, preset packages. So uh, now we're in the package and you can click on mouse deep, which is going to be the ones that I made. And then we wanna just narrow it down to reverbs. And so these are all the reverb presets that uh, I created for the effects grid. So there are six algorithms here. They're basically different approaches to reverb fundamental approaches. And then there are several different presets that correspond to a, a certain um, algorithm. So if it says ALG 300, that means it's using the um, Luxverb 300 algorithm. And so if you're familiar with what that one does, then you know the preset is going to sound within that space of, of sound. So let's go over the different, the core algorithms. The first one is a cheap pedal reverb, and this one sounds cheap. Let's listen to it a bit here. So you can hear that there's a lot of echo there. It's not like a smooth, continuous reverb. If I get some uh, drums here. It's maybe not so pleasant as a, uh, as a percussion reverb. And that is because in this particular algorithm, we're just using three all pass filters. It's, it's designed to be very simple. Sometimes you want that kind of cheap sound. It's, sometimes it can sound quite good actually, depending on the usage, but it's here, it's very relatively low on CPU. And also this is a good one to kind of take apart and see how it works um, as it is somewhat simple. Like this uh, modulation section, is, is slightly complicated. It's probably not as bad as it looks, but it, it, uh, this part is really the, the main thing that's happening and it's very simple. Uh, so it's easy to kind of understand what's happening. Okay. So now we're looking at D verb V 100. So the idea of the D verb series, uh, um, they're supposed to be kind of rack mount project studio type reverbs, I guess from like, in 90s and 2000s or whatever. Um, and that's basically just based on their relative uh, design and simplicity very loosely. Um, but that's kind of the thought I had behind them. So V100 is like the cheapest one. And basically that means it's the cheapest on the CPU. It's simple. This is another good one to try to take apart and see how it works. So uh, the settings on this are pretty straightforward. We have decay here. And that means how long is the signal lasting? How long is it reverberating? You make it really short. Get a nice little uh, reverb that makes things more full. And then you can get, get a nice large space in there if you want to. So diffusion is kind of like the thickness of the reverb. Uh, when we turn it up, it's gonna be more smooth basically. There's gonna be more uh, kind of individual little 
reverbs basically or, or delays that are all kind of slush together uh, and then when we turn it down we'll get more individual kind of reverb hits so it basically sound kind of more grainy especially with percussive things and that can sound uh, decent especially if we're dealing with like a piano or something like that um if i switch to piano here wait that's not piano It can sound quite sweet, but when we're doing something more percussive, like drums, I don't like that sound. It sounds grainy to me and it's just not nice. So in any case, let's get back out to the reverb here. So we have diffusion, we have dampening, which basically is how quickly do the, the higher frequencies die out. And the more you dampen, the more they're gonna die out quickly. And uh, generally, if it's if it's supposed to be a space that is full of stuff, it's going to have more dampening, like carpet and so forth. And if you want a harder sound, uh, a sound of like harder surfaces, you want to turn down the dampening there. So we dampen. We don't get that kind of sizzle. So that's what that does. Now, echo basically is changing some of these um, all pass filters to a higher de decay time, a delay time. So it's gonna make it last longer and become kind of more echoey in, in general. So you can get a different sound from this. If I, I can make this really low here and it gets real grainy and so forth. But if I turn this down and turn this up, turn this up too, it's gonna give me a different sound basically. So you have that kind of variety. Um, now the modulation is basically to make things more complex. Uh, when we're dealing with some fixed, basically some fixed delays, we can only do so many because of the limitation of the technology, we can only have so many delay lines going on at a, a certain time. But when you're dealing with a real space, there's gonna be like a very high complexity of how the things are bouncing around in, in the space. <clears throat> so using modulation is one way to kind of simulate that complexity. So generally, it, it, if when using moderation, it'll give you a more rich sound and a more complex sound. If you turn off the modulation, it will sound more kind of metallic and artificial, uh, or at least more like you're in some sort of a, a very metallic room with a lot of resonances, or, or you know, for instance, like how a shower room might sound, that sort of sound, okay? So um, if you want that kind of sound, you can get it by turning off modulation. And like I said in the last video, generally the sound you want for, if you want a smooth, rich reverb, you want that modulation sound in there. So there's also in all of the algorithms, a second page of advanced settings and you can get there by clicking here and here are the advanced settings. Now I have a 12 bit mode for this particular reverb. And for some reason to me, it sounds better in 12 bit mode. You can kind of uh, see for yourself if you agree with me or not. But yeah, I like it in 12-bit mode. These settings will vary from reverb to reverb, from algorithm to algorithm. Um, and generally you don't have to mess with them, but it, you know, if you want to go in here, mess around with some stuff, see what it does. Let's go to the next algorithm, which is uh, V200. And V200 is similar to V100, it's just richer and it's, it takes up more CPU, it's more complex. So it's just like a more um, advanced model. And it's, it's a pretty decent reverb. I like the way it sounds. And again, you wanna just try it out and see how it sounds in your mix. The uh, controls here are pretty much the same except for uh, dampening is reversed on this one. To be honest with you, that was probably just, I wired it that way and then didn't change it. <laughs> There's no real reason for that, but uh, then we also have this parameter called resonance, and resonance is 
technically it is how much signal we're feeding back into the reverb from the uh, output of of the of the array of all pass filters um but what it practically does is it gives you more decay or a longer reverb and it if you turn it up a lot it makes the reverb kind of resonant like certain frequencies will be enhanced more than others uh and that will make things sound typically more more uh like you're in a a space that's more simple in its geometry if that makes sense um but let's let's mess with it and see what it does turn it all the way up so definitely more sustain but there's a certain ring to it there now there's modulation here so it's not going to ring out artificially if i turn off the modulation you, you see how stale it sounds all of a sudden and then if i make it a small space it kind of you can hear the resonance there in any case um you can again tune them and see what works for you and again, there is an advanced page here with a few different uh, things about the modulation here and so forth. So yeah, this is a nice one. Okay, now let's go over to Dverb 370. And this one is one of my favorites. It's really good with nice long decay times. Um, maybe it's a little bit more kind of uh, uh, idealized or stylized than the other ones, um, but has a really cool sound to it. Now, um, by default, when you load it up, it's going to have early reflections turned on. And that early reflections actually comes from the Bitwig uh, reverb device. I just put it into the pre-effects. So if you turn it on, it sounds quite different. And that's the default setting uh, on, but I, I, I think I kind of like it better off. Um, has a, a nice feel to that space. And you can really crank up to the K. This is what the preset um, Eververb 2 is based on, or, or the algorithm Eververb 2. Let me just load that one up real quick if you haven't tried it out. It doesn't last forever, but it lasts a long time and it's very smooth, it doesn't degrade. Um, as it is kind of cascading within itself there. So I really like this preset. Um, it's good in many different situations where you need super crazy long reverb and you want it to be super clean. So that's kind of the idea behind that one. Then we go into the Lux verbs. The idea of the Lux verbs is that they're supposed to be kind of studio grade um, reverbs. And if we look at the algorithm here, it's a little bit complex and it's got some different features with it. So the most important thing is to see how it sounds to you. But you can definitely tell that it has a different character to these other guys. And again, content matters. If you're going in to a piano here, I think you're gonna have a, a different idea of, of what the reverb is bringing than if you're doing, you know, drums or something like that. Something that's appropriate for drums is not necessarily gonna be appropriate for piano and vice versa. So this one, yeah, it's it's got some same sort of controls. It has this room size the parameter here, which is a little like echo, but basically it's like the early reflections within this particular algorithm. And it makes it sound fairly different if you have very small numbers here than if you have very large numbers here. So again, something to play with, get your dampening on. It has a chorus built into it, which makes it sound kind of with a lot of it, it really sounds a little strange, I think. But that's something you can play with 
it's uh, going to be nice in certain circumstances. And then there is LexVerb 420. This one is the most CPU intensive, um, but it, I think it sounds pretty great. Um, and it has pretty much similar controls, it has an echo here. Um, and let's see. Yeah, all of these again have the second page. Uh, let me just play a little piano over it to give you an idea of what we're looking at here. Uh, piano. Anyway, I really like the sound of it. It's one of my favorites, but again, it's not for every situation. The whole point of this though, is that having these extra algorithms can help your sound. You can try them in different situations, try them when you're mixing down, see which one meets the needs of your mix the best. And that's only uh, going to help you to have the best possible mix. And these algorithms will definitely offer you something that the um, stock reverb can't offer. And even I think some things that, you know, some of the other um, reverbs you might have can offer. And one of the reasons for that could be because the grid is uh, four times over sampled and, uh, you know, it it's really has high quality signal path. Uh, so I think they're there's a potential richness there and a cleanness that you might not be able to get other places. In any case, that's the algorithms. Try them out. Let me know what you think. Um, have they been useful to you? If you've already been using them, let me know if they've been useful and how you think they compare to other algorithms. Um, these are actually the first algorithms uh, that, for reverb that I've written. Uh, I did a decent amount of research on them to try to get them as right as I could using the tools within the grid. But your feedback would be great to, uh, you know, let me know how you think I did. In any case, thanks again for watching this video. If you have any questions about these algorithms, let me know in the comments. Enjoy creating music and have a wonderful day. Bye.